In this example, we're going to use the sales value at split off method to allocate out joint costs to different products. Our company in this example is Scorch Dairy and they manufacture a variety of dairy products. Uh, one particular product they make is cream and during the production of cream, a byproduct called liquid skim is produced. So right then and there, we know that these products are going to incur a joint cost because we can't make cream without making the byproduct liquid skim. It comes from the same production process. So the cost to make cream is also going to be inclusive of the cost to make this liquid skim. Well, this liquid skim can be used later to make other dairy products. Scorch Dairy is proposing to incur further production costs to turn our base level products, the cream and the liquid skim, into different products, which we think we can ultimately sell later, which are buttercream and condensed milk. During this further production, we're going to have some waste. So every ounce of cream doesn't become an ounce of buttercream. Some of the cream burns off, gets lost in transfer. Uh, we have a little bit of waste going on, but that's okay. Scorch Dairy's information related to the production of all of these goods is as such. We have $340,000 in joint costs. Again, we can't make the cream without making the liquid skim since it's a byproduct. So to make all of that, it's going to cost us $340,000. We have to figure out a way to allocate out costs that of that $340,000 to cream and liquid skim. We also have separable costs, and these are costs after the split-off point that are identifiable to making these further processed goods. So to convert the cream into buttercream is going to cost us $50,000. To convert the liquid skim into condensed milk is going to cost us $100,000. We have information below about the quantity, uh, sales price, transfer amounts, sales amounts for all of our different products. For cream, we had zero beginning inventory. We produced 20,000 gallons of cream. We decided that we weren't going to sell any of this cream as is, but instead transfer all 20,000 gallons of cream for further processing to become buttercream. But had we sold it as cream, we would have sold it for $9 per gallon. Liquid skim, we again had zero beginning inventory. We produced 50,000 gallons of liquid skim. We chose not to sell any of that. We transferred the entire 50,000 gallons off to become condensed milk. But had we sold that liquid skim as is, we could have sold it for $4.50 per gallon. We started the period with zero beginning inventory for buttercream, and we produced 15,000 gallons. Again, some of this gets wasted, so we transferred 20,000 gallons of cream to become buttercream. Since some of it was wasted, we only ended up producing 15,000 gallons of buttercream of which we sold each and every one, all 15,000, and we sold them at a price of $16 per gallon. Condensed milk, we had zero beginning inventory. We produced 45,000 gallons, just like with cream to buttercream. We lost some of the transfer from liquid skim to condensed milk. We transferred 50,000 gallons, ultimately only made 45,000 gallons of condensed milk, but we sold all 45,000 of those gallons, and we did so at a price of $10 per gallon. And armed with all of that information, we are ready to use this sales value at split off method to figure out what our margin is on all of our further process products by allocating out those joint costs. First thing we need to do is determine the total sales value at the split off point if we sold these products as is instead of transferring them for further processing. So cream, we produced 20,000 gallons, which we ultimately transferred off to become buttercream, but if we had sold it just as cream, we would have done so at $9 per gallon. That means those 20,000 gallons had a sales value of $180,000 in total. For liquid skim, we had 50,000 gallons, which we chose to transfer to convert to condensed milk, but had we not, we could have sold that liquid skim at $4.50 per gallon. And if we sold all 50,000 gallons at $4.50 per gallon, we could have had sales of $225,000 for liquid skim. So in total, Scorch Dairy could have sold these, you know, base level products, the cream and the liquid skim, for a total of $405,000. Now that we know what each respective product line could have sold for if had we not transferred for further processing and we know the total amount of sales we could have generated had we sold all those base level products without transferring them 
we can figure out what each product's weight should be from sales value. Uh, so the first one, cream, was $180,000 we could have generated in revenues had we sold it as is. That was out of the $405,000 we could have made in total. Well, if we take the proposed sales value it's split off for that particular product and we divide it by the total amount of sales we could have had of all of the base level products, we take 180,000 divided by 405,000, we get 44.44%. Which means 44.44% of our total sales value at split off would have been derived from cream. By that same process, we take the $225,000 of sales revenue we could have generated from liquid skim, we divide that by the $405,000 of total sales, and we come up with 55.56%. That's the proportion of our sales value at split off which could have been attributed to liquid skim. And now, we can assign a proportion of joint costs to each of these two base level products, the cream and the liquid skim, equal to that particular line's proportion of overall sales value at the split off point. Our weighting for cream was 44.44%. That's the you know uh, amount of sales we could have generated overall from that particular product. So if we're gonna you know have 44.44% of our sales value at split off, come from cream, it's fair to assign that 44.44% of the joint costs. So let's take 44.44% of the $340,000 in joint costs that we had to make cream and liquid skim at the same time uh, and multiply that out to come up with $151,111. That is the amount of joint costs we should assign to cream. Liquid Skim's proportion of sales value at the split off point was 55.56%. So let's assign 55.56% of the $340,000 of joint costs to Liquid Skim, and that's going to be $188,889. Now we know how much joint cost is getting allocated to each of our base level products. Well, we're not going to sell them as base level products. We are going to process them, process them further, uh, which means we need to send out a portion of each base level products, joint costs that are allocated to those further processed goods based on the portion we actually sent out. And our information tells us that we transferred all of the cream and all of the liquid skim for further processing, which means we should transfer all of the costs. So we're going to pass all $151,111 of joint costs, which we allocated to cream, off to its further processed compatriot, which is buttercream. We transferred all of the liquid skim off for further processing to become condensed milk. So let's transfer all $188,889 of joint costs allocated to liquid skim off to condensed milk. Now, since we're trying to find ultimately the gross profit here, we're gonna to need to figure out what our sales were. So we're gonna determine the sales value for each of our further processed product lines. Again, that is the buttercream and the condensed milk. We sold 15,000 gallons of buttercream. We did so at 16 bucks per gallon. And 15,000 times 16 is $240,000. For condensed milk, we sold 45,000 gallons at $10 per gallon. That comes out to be $450,000. So in total, we had $240,000 of sales from buttercream, $450,000 from condensed milk. That is a total of $690,000 worth of sales revenue generated by the sale of these further processed products. And now... Our last step, we can prepare a product line income statement to determine what our gross profit and gross profit percentage was from each line. We just determined that for buttercream, the sales revenue would be 240000 We transferred all $151,111 of joint costs assigned to cream, to buttercream, when we decided to process it further. So let's subtract that out. And then let's subtract out any separable costs. We had costs which were identifiable just to turning the cream into buttercream, which our information tells us there were $50,000 of separable costs for buttercream. And to figure out our gross profit, we just subtract our joint costs and our separable costs from sales revenue to get a gross profit of $38,889. 
for condensed milk. We had $450,000 of sales revenue, figured out on the last slide. We allocated $188,889 of joint cost to liquid skim, but then we transferred all of the liquid skim off to become condensed milk, so we transferred all of those joint costs. $188,889 of joint costs are gonna be attributed to condensed milk. And then separable costs to convert that liquid skim to condensed milk, we spent $100,000, which is identifiable just to condensed milk. So we're gonna subtract that from sales revenue as well to come up with gross profit of $161,111. And in total, we had $690,000 of sales revenue. Again, those $340,000 of joint costs, which we had to allocate out, eventually all ended up in buttercream and condensed milk. And we had a total of $150,000 of separable costs, leaving us with a gross profit of 200 grand. Which means that in the end, we can figure out what is our most profitable line, not by the raw number we have, but by the percentage. And to do that, we're gonna come up with the gross profit percentage by taking our gross profit, divide it by sales revenue, and convert it to a percentage. We turn a gross profit of $38,889 on buttercream. Let's divide that by the $240,000 in sales revenue to come up with 16.2%. For condensed milk, we had $161,111 of gross profit. Let's divide that by the $450,000 of sales revenue to come up with a gross profit percentage of 35.8. And overall, Scorched Dairy had a gross profit percentage of just below 29% at 28.99%.